to shift left security, we first need to understand where does security practice stand today? And what do we have to do to shift it as left as possible into our software supply chain? Now, the natural question is, what is the software supply chain? The term has caught on fire over the last couple of years because it takes a more holistic view about uh, how we uh, make software. It goes into um, how, we, how our developers write code, uh, what do they put in that code, how do we, uh, where do they write the code, how do we build the software, how do we deploy the software, and finally, how do we continuously monitor the software and primarily the artifact in production so that we can act on it if things go wrong. Now, this holistic view is very important because over the last couple of years, every stage of this supply chain has come under attack. You can take the example of the solar winds uh, hack. It came through a malicious upgrade that was originally introduced by a hacker compromising the solar winds own DevOps tool chain, right? Uh, Log4j uh, exploit, which is the Log4 shell, it came about because um, hackers were able to identify that a benign functionality of just logging can be transformed into an exploitable attack, right? So these things are gonna continue to happen. Um, what we observe as we go around talking to customers is that they face roadblocks in, in solving these problems, which seem very obvious, but they're they are hard to fix. There are two roadblocks. First is the delayed feedback loop that exists between the security team, who's chartered with identifying these security issues, and the dev team, who is most likely the, the team that is gonna be able to remediate these issues, because it's all at the application security layer. Now, Security teams, uh, usually, uh, not everybody, uh, what, what has been the practice is you scan the artifacts right before production or immediately after it goes to production, but the challenge is that any issue you identified, you have given your dev team almost no chance or no time to actually get them remediated before it, it impacts uh, customers and, and adds reputation risk to you as an organization. So naturally, if I'm, a, if I'm a member of the dev team, I'm frustrated with this process and I'm not happy, right? The second roadblock comes through even if you are in a shift left security organization, the challenge is the number of security tools is, is just growing uh, uh, all the time. So there are so many types of vulnerability scanners there are so many times of S-bomb generators, uh, uh, signing and attestation technologies. So as a developer whose job is to write code, all of a sudden I have to understand and make sense of the sea of information that is coming my way. Again, I'm not able to make sense of it, I'm not able to remediate my issues, and as a result, I'm not able to do my part to ship secure software. So the big question is, Given these roadblocks, how do I secure my software supply chain? We at Harness believe that there are two fun foundational steps to getting there. First one is handle the, the table stakes aspect of handling known vulnerabilities and remediating them as fast as possible. Our module called Security Testing Orchestration is laser focused on that problem. What it helps you do is integrate 40 plus different scanners, SAST, SCA, container, and DAS scanners at the right places of your CI CD pipeline. It ingests the results from all of those, it normalizes, it dedupes, and it prioritizes those vulnerability information and puts it in front of the developer in an actionable manner in his or her pull request process so that that's the best point for them to be able to fix the new vulnerabilities that their code is introducing before it has merged to main. Now, the, the, end, the outcome of this kind of a process is as a, as a developer, since I'm not getting a Jira ticket coming at me that disrupts my flow of work that Jyoti was talking about earlier in the day, I am happier because you told me before I get to merge my code, I need to do two, two more things. 
Okay, I'll go ahead and do it. However, just handling vulnerabilities and, and doing the table stakes of vulnerability management is not enough as the, as the hacks are, are continuing to show us. So we have to learn from the best practices of the industry. And for that, we can look at the government, which after these hacks went about to work and came up with this executive order 14028, which at the end of the day, at a high level, says that you need to do two, two critical things. One is you need to have a softer bill of materials, in short, SBOM, associated with literally every version of your artifact that is machine readable and has a list of all open source and third party libraries that your artifact is dependent on or is using. The reason is that this acts as an insurance policy, especially for zero day vulnerabilities. Scanners, they are by definition not updated for zero day vulnerabilities. That means they, these vulnerabilities will show up straight away in production and you, all you will get is a library version so you will have to search through your S-bombs and identify the artifacts that those S-bombs are associated with it, and then see where those artifacts are deployed in production, in non-prod, in build system, and even in your source code system. You then have an opportunity to remove surgically that vulnerable library from your entire software supply chain. So that's about S-bomb. The second part is about SALSA attestation or provenance. SALSA stands for supply chain levels for software artifacts. It sort of is a stamp of authenticity around the origin of your artifact. Where did it come from? Which source code system? Which build system? Um, who initiated the build? Uh, when was it initiated? Right? All these things are codified as, as metadata elements into the provenance that you get to check uh, downstream and make sure that you act on that information. So if, if an artifact has been tampered with, then obviously you should not deploy. Now, here is where if you use a hosted CI solution like Harness CI hosted builds, you get to leapfrog from Salsa level one, which is a very basic level, to Salsa level two and three, which is where the real uh, authenticity and the integrity of your artifact starts mattering. So this is where our latest module, soft, uh, Software Supply Chain Assurance, kicks into high gear. And it, it takes a very similar approach. You see there are similarities with, with, with STO, where first and foremost, as part of Harness CI, we are able to generate and attest the Salsa provenance, store it alongside the artifact. We're able to generate and attest the SBOM, store it alongside the artifact. Then as part of Harness CD, we get to look into those uh, new, the S-bomb and the Salsa at, uh, attestation and say, yes, they all have been good and now I'm ready to actually deploy. Now, the job is not done, right? Once we deploy, we have created our insurance policy and that will show up at some point when the next zero day shows up. So giving you a flow to start remediating those vulnerabilities as I talked about all the way back into the su supply chain. So now with this model, what happens is if I'm a dev team, I have information that is coming in from the security team, but it has all the context associated with. What do I need to do, right? Which library do I need to change? What all new deployments do I need to make to get to a uh, non-vulnerable production system? So in conclusion, the harness way to secure your supply, software supply chain is about adopting the two modules that essentially achieve these three key goals. Remove the known vulnerabilities, which is table stakes, right? Everybody should do that. Second is you have to harden against potential attacks by using things like Salsa provenance, and especially on top of a hosted CI build platform like Harness CI. And then finally, be ready to respond to zero day issues because the, the power of the uh, searchable SBOM and Salsa store is that now you have complete chain of custody about where your artifacts came from, what are they made of, and how do you fix them. With that, I would like to invite Monish here uh, back again onto the stage 
to demo us uh, STO and SSC in action. Over okay. to you, Manish. Thank you. I'm back. Uh, Okay, so before I get into the demo, I actually uh, had the honor of demoing this from a QA instance yesterday and this morning, of course. And I got an unscripted approval from Jyoti to make a different announcement, which is our new UI. So if you didn't notice, uh, the demo I did this morning and I'm doing now has a new left nav experience that's also coming out to all of you very soon. It makes navigation very easy. Obviously, I've been using it for the last 12 hours. You can you know, glance through all the products. You can switch to them. You can see you know, get started steps and execution pipelines and all in one place. Makes it really easy. So, so that's about that, yeah. OK. So now moving on to actually my job. That was all UX and UI team. Credit goes to them. Um, so as Sid explained, right? what I'll do is I'll walk you through um, you know, the entire pipeline and all the stages and steps on how it is set up. And then from there, you can take the sort of best DevSecOps practices uh, with STU and SSCA. And then I'll give you an execution rundown on how my pipeline did when it comes to security issues that you found as part of the builds that you're generating. So first things first, on the top, you can see I have the build stage, right? And I, you know, that's where I built my code. I have the CD stage to push my um, app to dev, and then further getting approval before I push to a prod instance such as a Kubernetes cluster or even on the cloud. Um, so what's new with all these two modules and something specific to SSCA is the salsa provenance that I mentioned in the morning. You know, this simple toggle helps you ensure that you're maintaining the integrity of the application or the build that you're building as it moves to different stages across your pipeline. Right? Very important to enable uh, and make sure that you know, you, you honor executive order 1402 that's being mandated. Um, the, the steps in, in the build stage uh, in regards to shift left that are coming from our STO product are all kind of shown here. So as you can see, I have SCA and SAS scanning set up, you know, with SNCC and with OVASP, I also have container scan set up with Black Duck and Aqua. These are just few that we support out, the, out of the box. If you would like to add more that you don't see in the list out here, you can simply click on add step and then you can get support for 40 plus scanners that you have in your environment, which is you know, of great value directly. And you can integrate them in one single click. Um, in my build state itself, I do have an SSE orchestration step that I spoke about earlier too. Uh, using this step in your pipeline, you can generate an SBOM in Cyclone DX and SPDX format, attest it, to basically say that this has bomb belongs to this particular application. Now, moving to my CD stage, uh, the way I have this setup is, you know, I've added an SSC enforcement policy. As I mentioned this morning, you can create policies to block open source components that you hear on, you know, LinkedIn every morning about a zero-day vulnerability, and you don't have a remediation plan around it. You don't know whether your scanners are going to pick them up. All you have to do is come to this particular page and add them to your list. So at least you know you're not shipping them as part of your software release cycles that are going out of your pipeline. Furthermore, I have enabled Salsa verification steps. So the provenance and the Salsa provenance toggle you saw earlier in the build stage, what we do in this step is we create an OPA policy to ensure that your build is coming out of a known branch or it's coming from a hosted harness CI build platform so you can make sure that the integrity is maintained as your application moves to the dev stage. Now, let's go to the fun part, right? Uh, we look at the execution view for this entire setup, and I'll give more emphasis this time on shift left, which I didn't do this morning. So going to sort of the result view, you can see I'm in the build phase here. I can see that I've had some success, you know, with this partial green and orange check mark here that my vulnerabilities were detected, but I, the failure strategy that I define is like, okay, flag the vulnerabilities, but make sure the build goes through just in this case. You can obviously enforce it and block it completely if you want it. The point I'm trying to make here is that there were vulnerabilities that were found. And if you go to the bottom out here, uh, you can see that there were approximately 219 vulnerabilities that just came up from the OVAS spanner. Now, obviously, this is good news, but bad news at the same time for your developers. You don't want to assign them, you know, your product sec teams have to go and analyze all of them and then which one applies to your engineers. We will do the job for you automatically. So we have a secret sauce. The sauce helps you basically deduplicate 
all of these 219 vulnerabilities down by 95% in most cases and assign them the ones that are most effective to actually make your software artifacts more secure. So you can see all of these vulnerabilities in our new, uh, in our security test tab. Um, in this view, as you can see, I'll select OWASP as a scanner. You will be able to see that um, I get to see only the small bunch of vulnerabilities that are applicable, so 16 in this case versus 219. And then there's a segregation out here where you can see that I'm showing up the issues for the most P recent PR that your developers need to uh, solve as they were making some pull requests or commits versus the previous pull requests that were coming up from the previous builds. So we separate them into a backlog versus the most current PR uh, view. Now, as Alex mentioned earlier, IDA is included. I'm not going to talk about AI anymore. But net net, the story is that you can use IDA to remediate and get recommendations from how to resolve these vulnerabilities. You can also request exemptions. Let's just say your developers or your leadership team you know, cannot get to it and you need to release a software for some reason and you're going to track it later. All you have to do is create a simple exemption or maybe mark it as acceptable risk for some reason and then come back to it. Once you do that, you can, you know, this will be tracked and you, know, you can follow up on those tickets at a later time. Now going back to the execution of my CD stage, I'm going to click on uh, pipeline and then show you the last step in my, uh, in my build stage. You can see that uh, I was able to generate an SBOM with this green check mark. The SBOM, as I said this morning, is available in the Artifacts tab, so you can quickly click on that and then download the SBOM right here and share it with your customers as part of the Executive Order 14028 mandate. Now, clearly this responsibility is for all software producers to provide SBOMs to your customer, but this responsibility also applies to us. So going forward, for all the harness software modules that we are building, we will start publishing our SBOMs in our registry so you can consume them and understand what's coming out of our software artifacts. Okay, so going back to the last piece, which is looking at the uh, results from, you know, why my build actually failed in the dev stage, um, it seems like my build partially passed because Salsa verification completed and I was able to understand you know, that the build is coming from a known branch or was triggered by a known user. But the enforcement policy actually you know, clicked in to make sure that I do not roll out any open source components that were not detected by the scanners as part of my shift lift strategy. So you can view those results um, out in the artifacts tab itself. You can move to the dev and you can see I have one violation. And when you click on this, you will get to know that you're shipping out Log4j, which, should, which is actually blocked, and that's why my pipeline broke in this case. So to quickly summarize with you know, the STO and SSE and the entire DevOps, DevSecOps story at Harness, we will help you find issues early in a pipeline using the shiftless strategy. We will help you prioritize those vulnerabilities using a deduplication strategy. We'll help you generate the SBOM and control the use of open source components, even though if they're detected as a zero-day vulnerability tomorrow morning, and more importantly, we'll help you ensure artifact integrity and through Salsa, all in all at the end of the day to achieve Executive Order 14028. So thank you so much.